Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of the USFL podcast. I'm the ref, as always, representing Pro Football Newsroom, the number one source in alternative football news. And I mean, we got all sorts of newsrooms, but the big one, the one that we enjoy the most right now, usflnewsroom.com. Check it out daily Ooh, baby, for all the latest USFL news. And I mean, we've been dropping some bangers lately. We've been having a busy week. We have some power rankings there, some analysis, everything that you need to know about the USFL. That's where you're going to find it. But hey, I'm joined as always by my man, Zach Kyleman. How you doing today, my friend? And be honest, how you doing? <laughs> you want me to spill the tea? Oh, no, right. no curtains, my friend. No curtains. Oh, you're right. You're right. Who am I kidding? I got to I gotta follow by the show policy. Look, folks, I'm coming into the recording today after getting into a car accident. So I'm doing great. It's nothing. It's nothing severe, by the way. So just just letting you people know out there. This isn't this isn't like life threatening or anything. Everyone in the in it was fine. Uh, I'm dealing with it on the side. But I'm good. Besides that, I'm just this is the way I'm unwinding from that is to get in here to talk with you because this is one of my favorite parts of the week. So I'm glad to be here with you, man. We're going to make it fun. This is going to be one of the best episodes to date. I mean, this is episode 17, Zach. 17 is my favorite number. There's a lot of reason why. I mean, the main one is my birthday is the 17th on the well, 17th. That's a start. That's a start. I lived off of the 17th exit off of the 696 in Michigan. There's a bunch of 17s in my life, but here we are, episode 17 of the show. And if you look around you, we have a brand new set. Hopefully you like it. I think it's a little bit on brand. So shiny. It fits. It's shiny. It's nice. I, I, let us know down in the comments below. Do you like it? Should we make a new intro? I debated it. Some people love it. I hear, I see so many comments about our intro, about how much they love it. So I've been debating. Do we keep it or not? Let us know. Do you like the set? Should we keep the intro? Should we get a new one? You know where they can also tell us, Zach. Social media, and it's easy. Yes. It's super easy to find us at USFL Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, which I don't know if you've been paying attention, Zach. I've been posting there a little bit more. I've been throwing a couple things out I'm, there. I'm impressed. Some exclusive ones, too. There's the picture of the ref and Dave the Wave, mascot of the New Orleans Breakers, which I'm starting to get called a bandwagon fan. Trust me, I'm wearing <laughs> the gambler's gear. But I, I was saying some things on that official USFL Discord that I think I have to stick to now. And I think I may have been yapping my mouth on Twitter but if the Breakers win this weekend, I have to buy a Breakers jersey. That's just how, what it comes <laughs> down to. Either way, it's a good, it's a nice look. Look, you and I are just repping our teams here, just with the hats. You know, this is what I could throw up here quickly for my end of the stick for my usual attire. And uh, I ain't ba this guy ain't bailing from his wagon yet. <laughs> Might be Owen too. Might look pretty damn bad, but I ain't leaving. I'm sticking with Jeffy Boy and company over there with the Panthers. I'll tell you. Shea better get better, though, I swear. And that line. Well, the line got to get better. It's an early season. Anything could happen. I mean, looking back at spring leagues in the past, at least the couple that made it a full season, there's an, a couple instances where teams that started with no wins, I think the, uh, the LA Extreme of the original XFL, I believe they started like. Oh, and one or uh, uh, one and three or something ridiculous like that and won the championship. So if you're a Panthers fan out there, don't count them out just yet. But <laughs> quite honestly, that's why I'm wearing my gambler's gear this week, because this weekend, the Clayton Thorson redemption tour begins. We're coming back and I had to throw I had to put some team spirit in it. Now, I was try actually trying to find a way to wear the quarter zip. And it, with the ref shirt and I mean, sorry guys, I got to rep, rep the ref stuff first, but we're, we're wearing the hat. I'm wearing you in my heart. I've been dropping the Thorson memes. I've been going heavy on that. So keep me, keep me honest, guys. We're going to make it happen, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Summer stock that's coming up. It seems so far away, but it'll be here before you know it. Canton, Ohio, we're heading down there, baby, or up there, at least in my instance, for right. the USFL championship. Spring stock was so nice. We're doing it twice. Two-day mm. event. 
July 2nd, the day before the championship, we're all meeting up for a tour of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you this, Zach, I think I think the last time I've been there was maybe I was like 13. So I know there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of new stuff in that Hall of Fame that I haven't had a chance to see yet. And I'm excited to see it with you and the rest of our fans. But don't worry. We know you guys like spring stock, so summer stock. The big day, July 3rd, the parties, hopefully, in the parking lot, weather pending. We're going to have a live stream, live podcast, free food, giveaways, and good times. We hope you join us. I think we're going to start it at 12 Eastern. That time might change. Sounds we good. have to... We'll have a discussion about that and solidify, but I think 12 Eastern fits the bill. Now, one last thing, though. You like free stuff. We like giving away free stuff. The road to 100K starts now. Next stop, 5,000. All you need to do is make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell. It builds morale. I'm telling you, if you're having a down day, a, a a down day, a down week even, maybe your team is 0-2 like Zach over here. Maybe they are. Click that (laughs) bell, get a little morale, and I'm telling you, if you were a Panthers fan, if you didn't click that bell, you might have missed out on an interview we did over the past week, or at least Zach did, with Terry Myrick of the Michigan Panthers, and we actually met his father out in that opening weekend, so sign those guys up. Make sure you check that interview out because it's a banger. And I mean, real quick, before we get into the news, we can't forget about our good sponsors, Royal Retros. Save 10% off all your purchase at royalretros.com. Just use coupon code USFL podcast. They have retro USFL gear, XFL gear, World Football League, basically anything you can imagine. They got it. Save 10% off USFL podcast. Get signed up. So. Zach, I think we jump into the news here. Week two, week two started out a little bit slow. I think it picked up a little bit of pace. I'm going to run through the scores here real quick, and then we're going to give our thoughts on the situation. So as I mentioned, first game up, Northern Duel. First Friday night game of the year, Michigan Panthers taking on the New Jersey Generals. Now this one was a slow one. On both sides of the field, ultimately, the Generals pulled it out 10-6. to Moving over to Saturday, first game of the day, Keystone State battle. There was a lot of eyes on this game, maybe being looked at as the traditional rivals. Well, the Stars came out on top of the Maulers 30-23, to but the Maulers didn't go down without a fight. Now, Saturday night, double down derby, Stallions at Gamblers. Technically speaking, considering the Stallions are based out of Birmingham, both teams right. fought well, but Jamar Smith, I think, made a star out of himself this weekend, topping the Gamblers 33-28. to Now that takes us to the last game of the week, Sunday, Breaker Bay Brawl. Once again, the band is hosting the last game of the week, this time against the New Orleans Breakers, another one that made a star out of himself here, Kyle Sloter. 25 for 39 on passes, 266 yards, two touchdowns. Again, claiming two of the players of the week, taking out the Bandits 34 to 3. Boy, what a week. Again, that first game of the week, Zach, that Friday game, I was watching it and I said, you know, there's some slow games in the NFL. I'm not concerned. But as the people tuning in, maybe there's some worry there. Now, if you tuned in to any of these other games, even the blowout on Sunday, I mean, we saw some fun football and and some wacky shenanigans that we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. Right. But I got to ask you, Zach, (laughs) looking at all the games, now that we've seen them all play out, what was your favorite game? What was your favorite matchup this weekend? You're asking my favorite. Wow. Because, I mean, I'll tell you, Saturday really stuck out to me. I mean, you you get you got such a treat with whichever option you got. And I, I think the one that stands out the most to me is really that Mauler's Stars contest. Because the Pittsburgh Maulers, 
they look like they were dead in the water. Everyone is knocking, is knocking them for, you know, that whole United by football clip a week prior. You have, you have an offense that's running consistently on third down and long. So everyone's assuming coming in that it's going to be they're They're down on the mat mm-hmm. and maybe Kirby Wilson's not ready to adjust his offense, but sure enough, what they did, they came in. Sure. They started out a little slow. You know, it looked like the stars were going to dash out the gate. Luckily, one thing that helped them, their defense is still one of the stronger ones in the USFL. Uh, J- I mean, if we're talking in terms of stars with the USFL, uh, you know, J- Jalen Wilton Sapp there for the Maulers. Excellent job. You know, I mean, he was, I mean, the fact that he was highlighted for possible defensive player of the week, that fumble recovery for a touchdown really sparked his really sparked the Maulers to get on the right step. And I meant Jalen McLean sap <laughs> just as a heads up. I need just to re put re clarify. Nonetheless, though, besides that, Josh love definitely is the solution mm-hmm. for the Maulers. He is your guy. There were still a few, one too many throws that, you know, timing based. I love Joel clap because he definitely gives you insight on what needs to be done. And that's one thing he showed is that Joel, Josh love, it's get, he's getting close. He's finding connections. Bailey gathers. I'm definitely wanting to see more of this kid. You know, one of the top guys actually leading receiving right now in the USFL after this past week, uh, that San Diego state connection with Josh, with Josh love. I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. And I think that Kirby Wilson he's showing that much like he said, either in press conferences in United by football, you name it. He's slowly learning how to be a head coach. This was a great next step. Thing is, they got to finish. Mm-hmm. I know that the Stars have a lot of firepower. That's why that they were able to respond so well. Um, and that's something that stuck out to me. I wanted to see all, some quarterbacks take the extra step after week one, get a little more settled in. Sure, Brian Scott took four sacks less than the week prior, but maneuvers the pocket better, even though he gave up that fumble and gave and had, had an interception. Three touchdown passes, 272 yards. That's star-level QB play, Mm -hmm. not to have a pun intended there. Right on, right on. And that's one thing that we're really starting to see coming out of this week, too, is those stars really shaking off the dust. Not the team, but the the, the, as as far as the players, right? So Brian Scott, Kyle Sloter, Jamar Smith. Yes. I I mean, they, they were good in week one, but I mean, week two, they're looking like superstars. And they're yeah. working around some some still some issues there. Like you mentioned with Brian Scott, still some issues on the line, but he's breaking free a lot better. I mean, I believe he's leading the league in yards, if I if I remember correctly, by a yes, good by a good bit. And I mean, <laughs> looking at that breaker bay brawl, I thought that game was gonna be a little bit more competitive. And between <sighs> that breaker's defense is scary. And when Kyle Sloter's on that dude's on and he was playing through an injury. Now I heard <laughs> that saying at halftime that he, he had to pop his groin. Now I it don't was, know about you, Zach, but that doesn't sound fun. Was groin popped in the first quarter. Like he felt a popping sensation is what it was played. Well played crisp in the second half. It's like, he couldn't even tell that he had said injury. And that's the thing. Like we wanted to see progressions. Like if you looked at Kyle Slaughter week one, he did average at best. He looked shaky, looked like some some things were not being settled in and that he was trying to feel out the speed of the game. This week, completely different version of him. Someone that I think people were expecting when Larry Fedora drafted him in the USFL draft. Is he he's doing well. He reads the RPO spread offense very well, you know, quick passes. He even had some solid down throw downfield plays. Obviously, Jonathan Adams mm-hmm. is a monster, we are learning. Um, their receiving core has option after option, and they're starting to finally show up. And I, I can't wait, you know, for this next week. But like this week, we saw, you know, Adam Jonathan Adams obviously showed up. He was the big star, 92 yards reception, that amazing one-handed mm-hmm. grab you see on the highlight reel had several other nice back shoulders or readjustments. Uh Johnny Dixon getting some action. Uh, Sean Poindexter, who got his own touchdown reception. We've been waiting to see him show up the Arizona product. They have a core. And if Sloter is going to be on that set on that dial of play, and if he's able to maintain his injuries, cause I mean, dude's banged up, but still slinging the rock. Like it's no other. Oh, yeah. And if they're adjusting to the, now to the chip in the ball, which I think now this, I think this last week's another point, the chip in the ball, throwing it it shows that there's besides maybe the weight mm-hmm. QBs can adjust, right? We saw some great plays downfield with it. Jamar Smith had two excellent deep balls with the thing. The QBs are fine. 
Yeah. They can, they just have to get used to the ball. That's the only thing. Well, they got to get used to the ball. They got to get used to the receivers, right? Because I mean, there's, there's still that gelling factor of them really knowing where they want them on the field. And I heard some really good call outs during some of the games. Cause I mean, you have them mic'd up and they're telling them that pylon, just go to that pylon and put your right. hands up. I say, you know what? If that's going to get it done, sign them up. Let's get it done. And that's what we're starting to see out there. And I think the more that these guys play together, we, we've always said, give it to week three. And you're really starting to see some of these teams come together. Some of those offenses and defenses, I mean, truly create their identities. I mean, the breakers D for the second week in a row, let's keep this in mind for the second week in a row, they claimed two of the players of the week. This time yeah. they got the offensive with Kyle Sloter. And defense with Vontae Diggs, 11 tackles, interception, touchdown, defensive touchdown, clearly. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, special teams, though, goes to the gamblers all in. Nick Vogel, kicker, sign him up after a week of kicking woes, three for three on field goals, missed one of his extra point attempts. But one of those bad boys, 50 large, 50 yards, sign him up. That's what I love to see. That's what I'm talking about right there. You want to, that's, that was something everyone was watching week two. They made the change. They said, we're doing the, taking the chip away. You got the K ball. They made a big issue on it on broadcast. And overall the league adjusted Mm -hmm. and it showed that maybe the chip was the problem. There were still some kicks. I'm like, okay, you gotta get, you gotta nail your extra points, man. Like that that should be an automatic, you know? So like, all right. But some of them I'm like, oh, great job. Mm -hmm. I was very pleased to see that there was an uptick in good, in good, solid kicking mechanics. Look, looked smooth. Kicks looked a lot better in the rotation. You know, we didn't see any of those wobbly off left or off right shots. Things were great. That's another up and up type of thing for this. And I'll tell you what, you know, (laughs) I'm really happy with the QB play. And I'll, even with some teams that didn't have, I would say stellar box score nights, I still see some, at least movement in the right direction. You know, for example, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about your boy Clayton Thorson mm-hmm. here because boy, oh boy, it was, it was roller coaster type of night for him. Uh, but guy, if the guy calms down, like that's the thing. I look at Thorson the last two weeks. If the dude slows the game down, you have a guy that can sling the rock. He can make those throws. Mm-hmm. You know, they were down 33, 21 dude rolls to his left. They make an improvisational deep strike where he's throwing off running opposite direction with his full strength of his right arm and connects nicely downfield. Oh yeah. No, he's <laughs> showing the Simmons. He, you know? He's showing glimmers of hope there. That's why I'm saying the redemption tour starts this, this next weekend. Because, yeah, if, if you watch that game closely, again, this is the, the magic, the greatness of having those microphones and those highlights. You heard Coach Sumlin tell him, you need to slow down. You need to get those jitters out. And they ended up putting Kenji Bihar in. He suffered mm-hmm. a minor injury. It doesn't look like it's going to be season-threatening by any means, but True. It, it probably will force Sumlin to focus on some of those things he needs to do with Thorson. And I think the end of that game helped his cause because he started – he started looking like the Thorson we know now another one. And this is where it should be an interesting week to watch here in week three, your guy, Shay Patterson. I mean, yeah. the whole game, th- there was some glimmers there. And honestly, there was some times his receivers let him down big, but that end yes. of the game, that last, that last drive he had, I mean, it's not horseshoes. It's not hand grenades. That's what I told my wife. But he did get close. He did get close to making something happen. Now, if he can carry that over to next week, I mean, honestly, that's kind of my game that I'm really watching this weekend. Maulers, Panthers. I think it's going to tell us a lot about both teams. I think this is the game. I mean, it even got bumped out of its time slot. I -hmm. hope that fuels some of these players to say, no, you made a mistake. And here's why. And I'm catching it. I'm doing pinky passes and things like that, right? So we'll see. But, yeah, we're starting to see the glimmers. We're starting to see some of these things come together. I think Josh Love has a really good opportunity with Pittsburgh, again, to kind of make a name for himself here uh, and really hold that spot, right? If he if he doesn't right. perform well, I could see Laletta uh, coming, in, coming in, maybe even seeing another player come in. Now it is. 
I mean, once you get past like week three, week four, you're that you're late in the season for something like that. But maybe, maybe we see a quick change after week three. I don't think we will, but we're not going to get to the picks just yet because there's one there's one item I know everybody wants to talk about or wants oh, us sure. to talk about from sure, week two. Sure, what what part? And you know what? It kind of it will tie this in with uh, just thoughts on a team that I think underperformed the most. Tampa Bay. I gotta. I gotta say here right now. I, I. A lot of people were on our dis on Discord. Whether it was USFL's official, whether it was ours, they were going. So we had. To, it was almost like a debate. You know, like for example, Jordan Ta'amu. Mm-hmm. Was he playing bad, or was his receivers playing bad? I'm gonna tell you. Be honest. That receiving core deserves a lot of scrutiny for so many bad, bad pass, bad drops that I witnessed in that contest that could have been rectified. It, it just felt like the entire day that unit was off. Um, you know, they try, I mean, nothing was going right. Even when you have good drives that were set up by the run, when a pass was needed, a receiver just couldn't come down with the ball, Mm -hmm. you know, except for Cheyenne O'Grady, like that first good pass early on Mm -hmm. in the first quarter that they had, people were just dropping ones that should have been nice setups. And it just was consistent. Vinny Papali, I was really disappointed. He was one that stuck out all day. I'm like, Jesus, you are not living up to what we are expecting. You hopefully you have a better week next week. Keith Mumphrey, mm-hmm. someone I thought would have a great connection with Tom that last week didn't show up. I, and I, again, that's something, if I'm looking at Todd Haley's unit, I'm like that receiving core has got to whip into shape. Cause that they got, you have to help Jordan avoid, I mean, dudes avoiding pressure like a pro and you watch people drop a pass and you just go, ah, like you just drop your shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course to add insult to injury, we bring in this point of discussion that the league brought up, which was fun. It was a funny meme online, like barstool highlighted it and it just kind of spread a little bit, not as much as the whole pizza, chicken salad, thing, but it had its moment in the sun. You have Antonio Reed who is coming back on a, on a punt (laughs) is what I'm looking at. And he essentially sits on the head of a breakers player. AKA a tea bag. He does a tea bag on the field. I'm glad and you so, said it, Zach, because I was I mean, going to use my we Halo say, analogy. We we're going to say it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you've ever played the, if you ever played Halo or any any COD game, you know what I mean. He tea bagged the guy. I mean, here's here's my take, Zach. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought it was funny. But bro, you guys lost 34 to three. <laughs> That's all right, I mean. Exactly. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Let's, I mean, maybe that's why you don't do things like that. That's that weird karmic sports justice that comes out in games like that. Now, the league is watching. I think, honestly, I don't, they probably looked at that and said, you know what? We can't, we can't just let this fly, right? This is because if you let that fly, then who knows what happens next week? And who knows what happens the week before. And yeah, it's a rivalry week. But Mike Pereira, he took to Twitter. And this is the second week in a row that we've seen a USFL executive come to social media and just make some adjustments. First, it was Daryl Johnston with the game ball and the chip for the kickers. Now we're seeing it with Pereira. So actually, I'm going to jump over there, show you that clip real quick. This is Mike Pereira, head of officiating for the USFL. I hope you have enjoyed the access to the field that we have given you in the USFL. Drones, sky cams, players with helmets, with cameras, microphones everywhere, handhelds into the huddle. We want this game to be enjoyable, and we told the players have fun with it. But in the case of Antonio Reed of the Tampa Bay Bandits, who actually sat on the head of an opponent who was down on the ground, that's totally disrespectful to his opponent and the game. And we want you to know that Antonio has been suspended for this upcoming weekend's game. Look at, we've told the officials, try to manage the game without throwing penalty flags. And we still want them to do that. But in the area of egregiousness, when it comes to taunting, going forward, we want these acts called. This is the USFL united by football. So as you can see, basically everything I just said, they, they told the refs, we want you to be a little bit loose. They told the players to have a little bit more fun. But at the end of the day, there's a line in the sand that you just can't cross. And this was one of them for them. Now, I speculated when the news first dropped that I don't think there's going to be a lot of people that were angry about the suspension. And I don't think there were. There was a couple online that said, well, that's a little bit overboard and so on and so forth. But here's the thing. The line is drawn. He didn't get cut, right? It wasn't that drastic. It wasn't a... uh, 
chicken salad versus pizza situation. He got a slap on the wrist. I don't know if it's a paid or unpaid suspension. I hope it's paid, but that's just my I hope so that's too. just my I, thought. I, th- I think it's just that you say you lose film, mm-hmm. you know, which is also damaging for you. That's uh, a decision that you made that decision. You're going to get penalized at least in that. But I also worry because suspension generally means, you know, it, it could be either way. Mm-hmm. They didn't say specifically if it was with or without, but I understand your point, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll be frank. I, I think the league, it's just, tr- they're trying to show themselves as, Hey, look, we, we see ourselves as a professional football league. And I, you see that in United by football, you know, like you see that in the first episode, all the introductions mm-hmm. that's been brought up. We are establishing a new league. You guys are being the first indoctrin into this and showing what this league is about. And this is a pro football league, mm-hmm. you know? So they're trying to treat it like a pro football league. You know, yes, you, you can have some fun, obviously, on the field. You can do jawing. I mean, we see a new clip from Bellamy over on the Breakers every oh, yeah. the last two weeks. The dude's jawing with people on the sidelines. So they're not calling everything like the NFL. Right, you know? right, right. But, I mean, stuff like that, it's like, okay, that that's not necessary. And then it also, because the league goes again, image of spring leagues, they just kind of, people just love jumping on these things and nailing them with stuff at the slightest thing. Oh, yeah. So, you know, even Barstool highlighting it and it coming off as kind of a joke that just leaves the door open for people to just scrutinize if they want. And I think they also looked at that and went, okay, Barstool's picking up and people are talking about it. We need to get a hold of this ASAP and keep this a little in the same vein. Like say, Hey, we're professional mm-hmm. here. That's not a thing we want to see happening. So that's how I interpreted it. For sure. Have fun, but with limits, which I can understand. Mm-hmm. They still let them celebrate in the end zone. They still let them do things like that. But honestly, I can't understand. We don't know about the guy that it was done to. I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest. If it was me, I'd probably have some choice words for some people in the back and say, seriously, bro, you're not going to do it. The dude <laughs> did the move from Halo to me. And so I, I mean, I, I totally understand because I mean that (laughs) funny, but disrespectful at the same time. Right. (laughs) I'll tell you, can we, uh, because it's rivalry week that that happened. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a part two. (laughs) You think that comes back up at some point? Dude, if somebody gets him back, oh my God. I'm just, I'm just saying, man, like someone's gonna, someone's gonna come up and be like, Hey, you did you disrespected my boy here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that you understand what you just did. And I'm just, I want to get clarified. It's number 22. I want to get clarified specifically who got unfortunately insulted here for the breakers. <laughs> it's just, I feel bad for, I, I feel bad. Here. I know. I, really well, I mean, do. that's ruthless. I mean, I've seen a, th- a lot of things in football and that's one that I don't think I've seen before. Um, I mean, We've been seeing, I'll tell you this while you're looking that up, we've seen some fun, nice, big defensive hits. I mean, straight up clotheslines in each of these weeks, man, that I look at the, even my wife looks at whoa, look at that. But you know what? They're still clean, weirdly enough. They're not like dirty hits. They're just big hits, man. And I mean, the kickers this week, dude, the kickers, I mean, Mm -hmm. Nick Vogel deserves that special teams player of the week. He does. I mean, kickers on both sides doing uh going up with blocks and hits this game i mean sign him up shout out to and here it is shout out to uh mike stevens there you go for not deserving that <laughs> well i mean <laughs> like you not. said like you said zach there's another matchup later this season mr stevens get your lipton ready that's all i'm saying you know? <laughs> stay, hey stay on the roster stay hungry <laughs> keep antonio Re- number 42 in your sights I mean, that's going to be the one to watch for. I mean, well, looking to this next weekend, I mean, we have an unwritten storyline unfolding in front of us. We're going to skip the first game real quick. Yep. But that second game Saturday, which wasn't even supposed to be Saturday. It's supposed to be Sunday. Undefeated, both sides of it. Only one can walk away with the win. Birmingham Stallions, New Orleans Breakers. I mean, that's the game of the week. There's so many people that are going to be tuning into that. And now I really, what I really hope to see is a couple things. One good weather and two, a big crowd. I want those Birmingham fans to show up. I mean, last week it wasn't that bad for the Birmingham game. 
I think they can no. build upon what they had last week for the fact of two two and O teams going head to head early season battle that has some late season consequences here and double header on Fox. Right. So early game, right. we skipped over it. This is, and I, what am I doing here? Tampa Bay bandits at the Houston gamblers, 3 PM on Fox second game, 7 PM on Fox Fox double header though, this week. Now I'm, I mean, both of those games look solid. I'm, I'm hopeful for the gamblers chances, but moving over to Sunday, early game, USA 130. This one is one to watch out for here. Pittsburgh Maulers at Michigan Panthers. And it, I, I mean, there's a lot on the line for both of these teams. I mean, more so for the Maulers really at this point, I think, than the Panthers. The Panthers, I think, they their record doesn't match people's anticipations of them yet. They, like, it hasn't settled in that the Panthers might actually go five and five. Like, I hope it doesn't happen <laughs> might. for the memes alone. It cannot happen, but you kind of have to start I mean, winning they, here. Right. I mean, they, they might, I mean, the, the, the North has been looked at right now as the weaker, of the two divisions, any or the two divisions anyway. So it could, but look they, right now, I mean, I ain't going to sugarcoat that. They're the underachievers of the USFL. Mm. People put them as one of the play. Many pundits put them as one of the top two to make it to the playoffs here come late June. And right now it's been inconsistent or marred with just sloppy play for them. You know, at least I'll give credit to the Maulers. They showed up last mm -hmm. week and were really one solid driver, a good defensive stand away from coming away with a victory. Or, I mean, Jesus, it could have it could have swung swung differently, oh, yeah. or we could have gotten overtime because of the fact that the stars converted the first USFL three pointer. Yes. I want to want to make sure we uh, we also respect the XFL's three point play. Just people I see online. Nonetheless, the Mauler showed last week there's potential there with what they have set up, and the, I just I want to see Jeff Fisher and company get Shea Patterson settled in for a full game. Mm -hmm as well as this line, letting him have a full game to not be rushing and panicking right. behind that, behind that front five, that, that is going to be crucial. And the Maulers have been lately. They don't give you much time. I mean, Brian Scott, as much as that stars line is looking like one of the weaker ones in the uh, USFL in terms of uh, giving Scott time or Scott just forces sacks on mm -hmm. himself because of how long he holds the ball for sacks. Either way, Pittsburgh has been getting back there. You don't think Shea's going to get hit a few times? Oh, yeah. Little, you're, you're in for a treat. I, I, I think people want to see who stands out and doesn't look like they're little, No one wants to go 0-3. Right. No. You know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and, Nobody wants to be the 0-3 team. Well, that's what I love about that. The late game on Saturday, only one team can walk away undefeated. Early game Sunday, somebody's getting their first win, right? Somebody's getting <laughs> yeah. their first win. I'll hold it for the picks, but I'm, I think this could be a fun game and we'll learn a lot about, is it a defensive thing or is there some lack on offense that we're missing kind of from both sides, from both teams there, mm -hmm. but then going oh, yeah. to Sunday night, first Peacock exclusive of the season, 7 PM, man. So I know some people aren't too happy about this. So if you do want to tune into that game, you might want to go get your account ready. It's five bucks a month, five bucks. You can get away with that. It is. It's unfortunate, it, but it is what it is. But we have the New Jersey generals, Philadelphia stars, which again, uh, could be a fun game, but I have a feeling I know who's going to take it. That's all I'll say it's now, the, but it's we in the, it's in the similar vein as stallions breakers. It's an early season matchup top two in the division that has playoff implications on mm. the line already, maybe to a lesser stake because the North is not as stacked as the South. But if you're talking about, you know, getting a game behind already, say one of the two bottom feeders in the North, like the Maulers or the Panthers picks up a game this weekend, mm. which they will, but I'm saying picks up some momentum off right. this weekend. You know, that's the thing. You don't want to lose momentum early, um, but that should be a fun contest. I mean, it's, it is slightly a shame it's on Peacock, but I get it. You know, it was part of the broadcast deal. And NBC, I think I think we're seeing NBC's even more testing out the waters with this league than even Fox. Mm -hmm. um, or they just 
I'll admit they've been a little low on the promotion angle, so we can do that way too. I want to call it that they're testing out to see if this is legit or right, not. Right, right, right. That's how I'm trying to play it right now. I don't necessarily um, look at it like yeah. that. I think they just know what they're getting into. They just need content, and they know that people like sports and people like football, so there's some more content that That's they can fair. put on their, That's fair. on their channels. And even more importantly, I think this is one of those things that they want to use to drive people into Peacock, because I'll say this, I see Peacock get a lot of flack online and I've been there before. I've waved the Peacock flag. It's not that bad. It really isn't. I I don't know, Zach, maybe, I know when I say these things, people probably assume, oh, the ref got a good old, he got a payday the, yesterday. The corporate shill is in Use the, the link down below to sign up for Peacock. But <laughs> no, but seriously, Zach, what is it? Why is there a thing that I don't, that I'm unaware of? Like, what is it that people don't like? I look at Peacock. I look at uh, Netflix, HBO Max. I don't see anything in Peacock that none of the other ones do. The interface is a little bit different, but it's not. I mean, I, I figured it out. I don't know. I mean, it's. It's got the office what? and like exactly some law and order. Uh, I don't know. I just don't see it like here. My angle. You want me to give me my yeah. last take on Peacock? I don't think it has enough content I care about. Maybe um, like, look, if you love the office, go ahead. Like be my guest mm. and tune in. If you like, I like law and order, except the problem is law and order. I like is gated behind the paywall. I see. Because I like the original Law and Order. SVU, I don't care for SVU. Right. In criminal Intent, okay, I like Criminal <laughs> Intent. But the original is where I want it. Like, I, I'm just saying, it, not enough of the stuff I like is is free or is the stuff I want to tune in mm-hmm. for. Uh, and the sports, I mean, NBC, they arguably have the most unique uh, catalog of sports right now trying to figure out what's their niche. Um, I mean, if you love soccer, hey, go right ahead. It's there. The USFL is a great way to experiment with football. I mean, they they have a lot of Olympic sports on there, too, so there's that. I think it's just the, the content for people. And then, of course, because we're seeing more and more streaming services go with the pay method to watch sporting events, mm-hmm. I think people just are kind of irked by, oh, now it's a pay-per-view event. Right, you know? right, right. That, that's kind of how I see it, but I look at it, it is only five bucks. Well, here's the you thing, You get a full three-hour game. I, I don't look at that as anything new. I was actually moaning about it to I, – I hang out with a lot of old people, Zach. I don't know. I'm old okay. at heart. I always have. I've always had friends that were like 65-plus even when I was in my 20s. I'm weird. Anyway, I was talking to this guy at the bar the other day, and we were talking about isn't it a shame – that you can't just turn on TV and watch your local teams. Like when I was a kid, if I wanted to watch the Red Wings or the Pistons, it was on either the Fox affiliate or the CW affiliate or UPN, something. But it was on free over-the-air TV. That doesn't okay. exist anymore. And you're lucky. I mean, you're lucky, especially with NFL, to even get, <laughs> if you're an out-of-market guy, to even see your team maybe once a year as a Lions fan, right? Oh, geez. And so yeah, talk I, about the money you? you have to pay for that. <laughs> so when I look at something like Peacock, I mean, I'll be honest, I actually pay for the $10 a month subscription to get no ads. I love The Office. My wife likes The Office probably even more than I do. We like Young Rock. They, they yeah. play, again, they have the USFL, but there's other random weird sports things. Speaking of random weird sports things, I'm going to go real off topic. Do you know what happened over the weekend, Zach? For random weird sporting events? Yeah. Have you ever heard of plane swap? No. No, I've definitely not. Dude, it, so it's a Red Bull thing, right? And these two guys take like Cessna planes up to like 100,000 feet. Like <laughs> for a Cessna, okay. that seems insane to me. That That is pretty high. And they nosedive them. And they have like special contraptions they built to keep them steady going down. And the two guys jump out of the planes and swap planes. And then write them back up and land them. And so (laughs) clearly once I heard about this, I said, sign me up. We're tuning in. And it came maybe an hour after the Sunday USFL game. It was on Hulu. So see, I I am not a shill. This is completely different. Now I've heard of Red Bull plane Mm -hmm. racing, which in Indianapolis, they've actually ran it at IMS before. They'll set up the pylons. You got to run through there. There's timing. You know, it's all about speed and agility through those corners. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that that's Jumping out of planes and swapping. So they only got one plane. (laughs) They only got one plane. The other guy had to parachute down. And I mean, the first one, they jumped out at the same time, right? And the first one's going, but then the other one starts going like wonky. And it was, Uh, it was bad. And you, but they were on mic the whole time. 
And the other one, uh, I can't remember the guy's names, but he mics over to the other guy. He's like, we lost the plane. He's like, no, I'm good. I'm in the, I'm getting in the plane. He's like, no, no, we lost the blue plane. The blue plane's out of control. And he's like, you sure you can't get out of control? And you can see this thing's like whomping all over. He's like, nope. But check this out. These guys, they thought of everything. They even had parachutes in the planes to not damage the plane. And that everything worked. Oh, wow. Nobody got hurt. I mean, they were a little bummed out that they didn't get to swap planes. They got one of them. It was super I gnarly to watch. It's a fireball of like carnage that just lands there. You're like, yeah, we lost it. It's okay. Well, that's what I was waiting for. I was like, well, <laughs> well where's the camera? And they're not going to. Well, anyway, they should have showed it. With the parachute, because I, I mean, that's interesting to me. They just showed it parked on the ground. I want to see it f- floating down. Either way, that was random. I, this is, these are the things I watch on these random streaming services, so, but, is weird stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess that's your angle. Like, if you want, to, if you want something to watch, that's fine. It was going to come up, um, and I guess you can try the service. That's what they're doing. They want you to try it. Say you start look digging around there, like oh look, I got the office, I, you know, I got you know other stuff that I paid for for, I forget is it for sporting events you have to pay individual oh, or is it you pay five and you get everything? So you pay five a month, you get everything. And honestly, I think if you look, if I can find it, I'll put a link down in the description. But I think there's like a three month trial for like a dollar a month. That'll get I'm you gonna, through the whole season for three bucks. Because I'm going to do it just for the replay. I'm going to be honest. I'll be in Chicago over the weekend oh, on Sunday. So up. that's like the one game I'll have to watch on replay coming home. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, you know, I'll have it. I'll check it out. I mean, that it, it's, it is what it is. It adds on to kind of our discussion here that we'll have in a minute about ratings and like experimentation mm-hmm. is how I'm looking at it anymore. Kind of feels that way. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that. Well, first, uh, I'll, that's a tease for what you'll get. Yeah, in a second. <laughs> tease that because we have to talk about some unfortunate news before we get into the picks. And the unfortunate news is the scoring of the picks. So after last week, uh, yo, oh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's un- excuse me. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for you. I get this is my one win. This isn't winning right now, Stefan. My stuff is currently. Let, let's let's put that out there, okay? I mean, I was on such a roll. I was one and zero, and then I had to get reckless and pick against you for the lulls. But now I'm two and three. You're four and one. By no means insurmountable odds, but how are you feeling? I mean, you you swept the board last week, Zach. I, I did I did sweep the board last week. I, I feel pretty good, honestly. Um, I'll say that you being a gambler's fan, it just fits your nature. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I know. Honestly, I, I rolled the dice. Honestly, I thought I went zero and four for the longest time, and then I realized that I agreed with you on the stars, and I said, "Oh, thank God I did that. <laughs> thank God I did that." Otherwise. Oh, Man, Jesus. one and four to four and one, then that that feels that feels a little a, a bit of a sting. Uh, but the first game up this weekend, and I don't care what you say, Zach, but I'm going first on this one. I'm wearing the winner right here. Clayton Thorson Redemption Tour starts this weekend, Saturday, 3 p.m. on Fox, taking out the Tampa Bay Bandits. Now, this is a risky pick, Zach, because Eh, it might be early in the season to call it a trap game, but I could easily see how Houston might let their guard down after how they performed last week against the breakers. Either way, I think they can edge this one out. I think Clayton Thorson gets a little bit more time. Hopefully like you mentioned, slows it down a little bit, but he's got laser eyes starting this week. I don't know if you've seen the memes I've been posting in, in the discord, I got him as Jesus and a whole bunch of him with laser eyes. This is our weekend. Clayton Thorson, don't let me down in Coach Sumlin we trust. Who are you taking, Zach? Well, you know, I'm actually going to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on this. I'm going with I'm going with the gamblers. And, you know, I'm. it's less on Thorson, more on Mark Thompson, actually. I'll tell you, Moose, Daryl Moose Johnson loves Mark Thompson. Mm-hmm. Anytime the guy goes on screen, he's, he has to bring him up. Like if someone asks, what's you, what's a player you want to watch? And like last week he said, oh, I like Mark Thompson. Uh, he's a, he's a big, he's a big beefy back. You know, he's, he's got the right, you know, eyes for the game. And I'm like, Hey, I'll keep an eye on him this week. And I'll tell you last week he had a game. He's one of the top rushers in the USFL, actually the top rusher in the USFL for a reason. Dude's finding holes, dudes churning his legs and getting the extra yards. And he's really been able to stabilize the gambler's offense while they get Thorson calmed down. 
That's something I'm watching for this week, by the way. Can Thorson take advantage of the Bandits defense the same way Kyle Sloter did? Because, you know, someone likes to run the RPO and likes to get guys spread out as two, kind of like Fedora does. So if you can slow the game down, take another week where Clayton's behind center, he gets jitters out. And finds those simple similar lanes. You get JoJo, you get JoJo Ward maybe back in to the fray. Otherwise, you know Simmons, Zuber, you know, and of course uh, Williams. You have all of them in there. They get a better week of connections. I want to see more progress because again, Thorson's the guy who's like the wild card right now. Again, no pun intended with the gamblers, mm-hmm. but you know, dude has the intangibles. He just needs to calm down. Right. I think this is a game that they could for the Bandits. You know, I I am going to pick against them, but you know. I think Todd Haley is going to rip into that receiving core like I was talking about earlier. Again, those guys really let down Jordan Ta'amu last week. Mm -hmm. Um, So, or Brady White, either one of them. Right. You know, so I think you're going to see a more competitive game. This is a crucial game in the South. Again, really tight division. Both are one on one teams. So, whoever's going to win this game is going to be then tied for that second playoff spot. Right. Really important contest, honestly. Uh, So, we're going to keep an eye. I do have the gamblers, though. I think they have a little more, at least, developed. And that defense, it has played up to par when given a chance. It's just got to make sure you don't get burned by deep passes like the the Stallions gave you last week. Right, right, right. So I'm looking forward to it. I I think it's a perfect way to start off my Saturday, which I'll tell you, well, actually, Zach, you know me. I always take a little pass in between the different Mm -hmm. conversations. Friday night. Later after this podcast comes out, you know what else comes out? Mm. Switch flipping that- sports, Zach. Switch <laughs> sports. Switch I've heard. flipping I've heard. sports. I am inviting two friends of mine. They're much younger than me. And they're my wife's friends, but I I, okay. I I I I treat them like they're my friends, but they're my wife's friends. I told my wife, I said, text them right now. Get ready. Stefan is about to beat you at every sport you can ever imagine. And, okay. And I don't know what if they know what to think about it. They know who I am, and they know I'm a wacky guy. I am going to beat them. I'm going to beat them good. I almost want to get a what are the the little cards for my computer so I can plug my switch in so I can show oh, people yeah. how bad I'm going to beat everybody at this game, dude. Switch bowling or uh, 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 Wii bowling. Yep, three hundred. Yep. I'm the Luis Perez wow. of Wii bowling. This is the only time I'll ever come okay. close to a 300. Switch sports, sign me up. It's almost like my Tetris. Still waiting. They they better talk about him soon on UI by football with that bowling. They like give me it's the just promo. Sitting there. Yeah. They're sit- well, I mean, they did the promo back in the TSO. Well, I like, want a new one. It's still chilling there. They could go to a bowling alley in Birmingham for God's sake. Just go with the team. I'm telling you, that's, that's the source do. of his powers. If they would just play the bowling promo, the dude would start, he would have 300 games. He would be just Left, he would be using both arms and getting receptions convincingly. But we're skipping a game here, a couple of games. This is the game, I think, game of the weekend. Birmingham Stallions, New Orleans Breakers, both 2 and 0. Oh. I picked last time. I'll let you pick. My pick is locked, so there's nothing that can change it. I'm hoping you pick the other team here because you're not giving me a lot of wiggle room to get ahead here. I, who, I know. Who do you, I mean, this is star-studded it, event here. It's a it's a tough one for me because I've seen a lot of what the Stallions are capable of offering. Um, I'll tell you, I love Jamar. Jamar Smith is blossoming into not only a league star but like a face of the league right now. Um, I mean, I love Mar- Marlon Williams and Osiris Mitchell have been, st- especially Osiris Mitchell. Every last these two weeks, he has come out as one of the top receivers in the USFL. Um, and they have solid running back group, of course, too. I mean, CJ Maribel, just like I was expecting, he's come out and he's shown up for these games. Mm-hmm. He has become a star for these stallions. Their offense is great. Defensively, still slightly leaky. You know, I felt they gave up a little too much to the gamblers there late. They did hold steady, though, at the end, even with pressure with the gamblers driving late in the fourth quarter. Uh, Scooby Wright and company, they are locking it down a little bit. So this will be their greatest test yet against what is looking to be the best offense in the USFL. Last week, they, they showed it. Like mm-hmm. The breakers show they have everything. They can, they can run on you. They can throw deep on you. They can throw quick slants on you. They can do everything. And defensively, they can slow you the hell down. And, and get some I, points. Yes. And I think not only, not only do you have that whole dynamic with these two teams being 2-0, 
But guess what city is the closest to Birmingham out of the eight in the USFL? Oh, yeah. New Orleans. Yep. I have seen people this week say, I am driving from New Orleans to watch this game. Best, best chance you're going to see that there will be visiting people that will be from New Orleans mm-hmm. coming in with those Stallions fans. It should be a rowdy game. I think it's going to be fun. I, as much as I love the home crowd, I like the overall package the Breakers got, and I have to stick with New Orleans. And, and you know what? <laughs> prove me wrong on prove me wrong on national television, Birmingham, for this one. You guys have so far. I've actually I keep getting surprised, and it makes for fun football. Make this a fun game again. Maybe come out on top with a late with a late game with a lot of tension, like you have these first two weeks, because it's great. Uh, but I have the Breakers. I overall this this squad last week it showed me what it is capable of, uh, and I think if there is enough opportunity, especially for the breakers on offense take advantage of what the stallions provide that they can either keep up or just eventually outpace Birmingham in the second half. So you had to do it to me. You had to take my breakers pick because I'll tell you, I I said it was Uh, locked and I half want to change it, but I can't, I can't do it. And you know, this is even messed up. I, I, I brought this up early in the show. If the breakers win, I'm adding that breakers Jersey to the pre-order. That doesn't mean I'm a bandwagon (laughs) fan, that means they earned my purchase. In That's what it means. I am a gambler's fan. All in. All in. But I am also a Lions fan, Zach. I'm prepared. If, and I don't think this is going to be the case, I think the gamblers are not only going to get to the championship, get to the playoffs, rather, we're going to win the championship. All mm. in. Sign us up. All right. But All right. if they don't, you know what? I need a backup. And if I'm looking at the field right now, I'm looking at the stars up north, and I'm looking at the breakers down south as these might be the guys that might be in the championship. Early season prediction. Right. Well, keep in mind, too, the USFL show, we got re- to rep our breakers fans oh, yeah. of the show anyway. You know, mm-hmm. got to rep those guys. For sure. Yeah, they, they're probably loving it right now. I know. Seeing what they did last week. I, you know, I'm i telling you, I'm going to convince them because they're still on the fence about coming to the championship. I said, you guys, you just, I don't care what you say. You got to come. You got to come. Street up to Canton. Exactly. Man. Dude, we're going <laughs> to, I mean, Canton is ripe for a good time. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. I don't know when the last time they've had a good time in Canton was. Probably the last... <laughs> Probably the last uh, Hall of Fame game in the NFL. I mean, there's not much that happens in Canton. There's corn nearby, and there's some hotels, and there's a Hall of Fame. But, I mean, you go to the Hall of Fame once a year. I haven't gone since I was 13, right? Anyway, Mm -hmm. maybe that was a little bit rough. So I'm also going for the Breakers this weekend. I think they're going to pull it out. I'll repeat a couple of things that you said. They right now, early season, they look to be the only team that has a complete package on both sides of the field. The offense in week two showed that Sloter can, is a beast and is ruthless and can play at non optimal uh, situations. Again, we talked oh, yes. about the groin injury. The defense showed it wasn't a fluke in week one. They're going to get you to fumble the ball. They're going to get it out of the air. And they are probably going to score with it while doing so. And they will not let up. 34 to 3, Zach. I mean, 34 to that is a shellacking if I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, the breakers almost cut almost carried the over themselves. Mm. Keep that in mind. And I always I keep bringing this up because I'm this league I've decided is the one I'm going to start focusing more on gambling elements with. They almost carried the over just by themselves, ladies and gentlemen. Like that to me was shocking enough. They they buried the Tampa Bay Bandits. Like even folks on the broadcast, similar deal. Like Jesus, I thought this was going to be one of the better games of the week. Right. This one, <laughs> this one wasn't even close. Right. It's because just Slaughter took such a step. I understand. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it, I think the Stallions will come out and play play it tough. And really, that crowd. I mean. You know, that's a, I think a lot of people will watch the USFL for, for these games. They want to see the local crowd, mm-hmm. you know. And I think in terms of flexing this game, you know, Fox wants to see the local viewership come back. Remember, that first simulcast, you know, Birmingham had excellent turnout. I, I think people do like this team. Mm-hmm. They want to see more of this team available. I, last week they were on FS1. You know, cable is a little harder accessible for people. They want easier access. Put them on Fox, mm-hmm. and that's what they did. 
you know, it should be a great time. Plus you'll get hopefully carry over from that early, earlier bandit bandits and gamblers game as well. You know, makes it for a whole nice Saturday day, uh, it is partly raining though, but I hope that stays away throughout the day. That's all I can tell you. I want it to stay away. Partly raining's fine. Thunderstorms. That's where I have an issue because once there's lightning, there's going to be a delay. So hey, fingers Correct. crossed here. It is Birmingham or springtime in Birmingham, which Zach, as, as we've learned, as we've learned, <laughs> is very random. It's very random. As, but hey, you as know, we've learned, they do have. Well, let's we'll segue here real quick before we talk about the other two games. Did you see they have a new official local weather bra- broadcast partner in yes, WBRC Fox Six? So we saw that they had some extra equipment installed on the stadium, and I think they even have a, a Twitter account that shows like images throughout the day and the temperatures. Well, now Mm -hmm. they're the official partner, at least for the 2022 season. Didn't mention beyond that, but let's be honest here. Even in 2023, if they move away from their hubs, I would be amazed if Birmingham's not a team. So I see that that partnership moving into the future. So stay tuned. We have some weather folks that are communicating directly with the league, so you can guarantee they're looking at that situation as well. Now, moving on to Sunday, though, this is my other game to watch weirdly enough pittsburgh maulers michigan panthers 1 30 p.m on usa this one's a tough one zach and i mean i feel it's messed up but i think you might have the same opinion as me well you're the picking this next oh yeah if we're rotating when i look at these two teams and i look at week one and week two they kind of flip-flopped they kind Mm -hmm. of flip-flopped a little bit but in week two, I think I saw more out of the Maulers than I did the Panthers in week one. So things that they have going well for them. Their defense is looking good. Maybe not as good as the Gamblers. Maybe not as good as the Breakers. But probably the best defense in the North. The scores don't necessarily reflect that. Maybe last week's does because we saw some action there. But mm-hmm. with the swapping sure. of putting Josh Love now in QB, we're starting to see the rhythm move a little bit. We're starting to see the machine become oiled. We saw them get their first offensive touchdown, which, I mean, sometimes you just need to break the ice. He needs a little bit of work, but he has less time than Laletta had out there to kind of get into that rhythm. And when it, when I have to look at these two teams and say, who is going to pull it out to the Panthers credit? Their defense is looking pretty good. Both the games they've been in have been low scoring, but is Shea Patterson going to play like he did in the last couple minutes of last week or the first 50 odd minutes of what he did last week. And so I'm going to have to go for the Maulers on this one. So hopefully, hopefully you're, you're giving me the home pick Zach. Cause I need to, I need to, break away from you somehow but tell me well, tell me what you're feeling here well that's that's the thing is Shea Patterson going to play a full game are we going to see him and that offense consistently be able to move the ball without any hiccups without any missteps they are getting their full they are getting it appears their full receiving core is going to be healthy for this one so like Jeff Bidette, he's he was full going practice this week looks like he's going to be back that's someone you want to have have back on of course they have others Ray Bolden also going to be giving you a little bit more impact there too. I want to see some forward movement from the Panthers offense because they're defensively, they have kept this team in games the past two weeks. Really, it's just it's up to Jeff Fisher and company to find some sort of headway mm-hmm. against the Maulers. And you know what? It is a tough defense. I'll give you that credit. I, I've i been arguing for the Maulers so far just because I like that they got themselves off the mat. They almost won a game against the, arguably the top North team, one of the top four best teams in the league, in the Stars. And yeah, there's a lot going for there, but damn it, Stefan, I got to be like you and I'm doing the Homer. I'm sticking with the Panthers, baby. I got to be like you last week, like the gamblers. I can't pick against my own team in this contest. They are in a desperate mode to avoid the own three start. Don't be the laughing stock. Jeff, get to that one and two <laughs> section of your standings. Be back in the chance to get for your top two spots. This is your time. The defense has your back, man. Show us what you got offensively. You have now three weeks under your belt and a healthier roster now. You know, 
please. Normally I'd argue you. with you, but the fact that I got you to pick something that I didn't pick, I'm happy there. But I'll tell you from a fan's perspective, I can't blame you because I'll tell you, sometimes people might think I'm crazy. Sometimes that's all it takes is for your team to win is for you saying, I'm going to pick you to win. And so Just Zach, I, I, I wish you the best of luck this weekend. I'm also rooting for the Maulers because I need a win. But I, I, again, this is the, you know, usually even in the AAF and the XFL, I, I had this w- rivalry with the teams. I really wanted one team to win. And I do have that with the gamblers. But I mean, if the gamblers, uh, like the breakers, for instance, the break, I will not be mad if the breakers win the championship. They're fun to watch Panthers. I, I like watching all these teams for, for different reasons. But the gamblers, come on. Clayton Thorson uh, yeah. Redemption Tour starts this weekend. One more game, Peacock game, 7 p.m. Sunday. New Jersey Generals, Philadelphia Stars. Break it down for me. Simply put it, these are definitely your two best northern squads. The Generals last week, I think, took a step backwards. And I really think it's a lot of it is credit to the Panthers defensively. I also think, and this is just me, and I think this is others, I'm not a fan of the two QB system Mike Riley's initiating. I know that there's some strategy there. I know DeAndre Johnson and Luis Perez offer different skill sets, and that's what they're trying to do is throw off their game. But I think it's almost it's almost coming a little becoming slightly predictable to me. Uh, I want them to pick one. Personally, I would prefer Perez slightly. Maybe I'm wrong. I will admit Johnson did went five for six. So that's fine. He can throw the ball downfield too, but. Perez to me has shown that I think he's a, he's just as capable of maneuvering the pocket and as well as I think being more professional. We'll see. You know, I think they're going to continue this two QB system because Mike just wants to do it. I think it's not, it isn't even about trying out QBs mm-hmm. anymore. I think he just thinks there's something there. Um, and they have a hell of a running back duo. I mean, Trey Williams and, and Darius Victor, you know, one of the best running back duos and some of the best running backs in this league right now. Um, you know, they can obviously impose their will, especially against a stars defense that has, Shown that it can have some, it can be a little leaky at times. You know, mm-hmm. I think for the generals, a lot of people don't talk enough about their def- about their defense. Last week, I thought they showed up well against the Panthers, even with the inconsistent offense. Offense, and there's opportunities to take advantage of the stars. Again, Brian Scott either sometimes holds the ball a little too long, or his line sometimes gives way too many, one too many free passes to go right at the QB. Mm-hmm. Here's here's one thing I'm looking for, and this would be a kind of a fun prop bet. Does Brian Scott get sacked on the first play of the game for the third straight week? Keep that in mind. Do you want to throw some money on that? I won't. Um, <laughs> I haven't. But, <laughs> you know, if it happens a third, maybe I'm throwing it for a fourth. I'm just saying. Patterns are starting to develop, it appears. Right get on. the jitters out of the way, sack your quarterback. Why not? Uh, I will mention, though, even with that, Brian Scott is showing he is arguably one of, if not the top quarterback in this league. Um, does he hold on the ball a little too long sometimes? Sure. But when he's given time, guy is able to find what he wants out of the pocket. That receiving core has started to get into a groove of its own. Uh, obviously Maurice Alexander. I mean, talk about a guy that not only for special teams, but for receiving punch, he has it. Obviously Jordan Sewell getting a little more active in that offense as well. Uh, Chris Rowland is looking like he should be healthy for this game too. He was one of the, the slot star in that first contest. I like what the stars are doing. And I'm actually going to take the stars in this because I think they have a little more coherence and synergy. You know, Riley, I think, is trying to be a little experimental, and I think it's going to hurt him in the end here. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's adjusted, but I don't think there's enough punch. I got the stars in this one. It's unfortunate because I also have the stars. I, I mean, I agree with everything you said, and I can't go against with any of your points there. Now, just to kind of, I guess, for a topic of conversation, now you you speak about it like it's a guarantee that Mike Riley sticks with the QB two QB system. Now they made it. I'll tell you this last week, week two, they made a big deal about him using a two quarterback system, right? If it doesn't work this week, do you readjust? I think so. I think he does. Well, I think at some point the North, as much as it is the weaker division, one of the teams at the bottom is going to be one and two, mm-hmm. and it's going to they're going to come off the mat and say, hey, we have an opportunity to get back here. It's a shorter seat. It's a 10 week season. Mm-hmm. You'll be seven weeks out um, and you're not I don't think you want to have too many more risks, you know, especially if you can't get it. If you can't get it back to week one where 
say you can put one in for a half like Perez did and he's comfortable in the pocket and all of a sudden you get switch up the mentality and Johnson can just do what he wants running through the field. Uh, if you have those starts and stops because you keep switching the QBs and how they are in sync with their receivers, yeah, that might be a problem. Because honestly, gotta be frank, I missed seeing explosive Randy Satterfield plays last week. I want to see more of that. You know who gives him more of that generally? Besides maybe one good back shoulder throw in that week one game? Louise Prez does. Mm -hmm. I want to see Louise. That's personally, I want to see him. You know, as much as I like Johnson's uh, explosive capability, I think that's going to have to be sorted out. You know, I don't think the two QB system is viable long term, is how I look at it. Yeah. Um, and if you lose this week, you know, you got to go in, of course, later on down the line. You, I mean, you're going to have to replay, of course, again with the stars. So that's going to stick right out. You know, you want to play your best against arguably the top team in the league. But I mean, again, the Panthers, the Maulers, they aren't going to wait around. You know, mm -hmm. we saw last week with the Maulers, they, they have something that might be going here and they gave the stars a run for their money. You think they're not going to be able to do that in the long term? You don't think Kirby's going to figure it out? Maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying. And then, of course, you got all the games against your Southern opponents later in the schedule. Sure, they got, for example, the Maul or the Generals play the Maulers week four. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you're going to go play those Southern opponents. You got the Breakers in week five, for Christ's sake. Right. And anyone else you can name, of course, like the Gamblers. Like, pick your offense, stick with it. If it works fine. Switch it up, though. I don't like two QBs. Most people I don't think do, don't like them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't stick with it all year. I think people would like it if you see more of the double passes. But I mean, well, yes. the thing with that is which the hasn't second... really shown up at all well, this year in league in the league anyway. Because, well, and here's the thing, and I totally get it. This is actually something June Jones told me a while ago. He said, you know, honestly, if you put two QBs in there, they're going to know what you're doing, right? So I get it, right? Sure. It can't be like a traditional, if you will, uh, uh, double pass. So that's why I think you kind of miss out on the whole benefit of the double quarterback, unless you just go full in and say, I don't care if the team knows that this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. And right. we're going to really tune it and tweak it to make it something special. But even then I think there's only eight weeks left, buddy. <laughs> right. So I, right. I, I think that ship has kind of sailed. Well, we'll see week three. I think will be another test for them. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, I mean, again, the Panthers defensively have shown out that they're stout you know, so that could have come into play, you know, and even if you want to argue my point with Perez, Perez threw a pick last week. He didn't, he, he had a solid, uh, course pass <laughs> in completion to completion rate, but that doesn't mean that he was, so that he was a spectacular level of play last week either. So mm. this could be a telling sign too. Otherwise, I mean, Mike Riley's just sticking around. He's the only one now that's doing it. Right. You know, <laughs> he's finding his way, I guess. So those are the picks. We'll see. So I really only have the opportunity to to edge in one more, but you know what? I'll 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 get away. I'll I'll chisel away at it at it throughout the season. I, I made a couple mistakes last week. That's on me. Okay. But we'll get there. We'll see. We'll we'll keep you updated next week. We're making a whole new round of picks now. With week two, there was ratings, and I mean that created a whole conversation in itself i mean the internet it... will be the internet the pitchforks the fires act now you're starting to see why i'm so careful with how i say things because i mean there was really i don't think a real big precipice for i don't even want to call it fighting because i don't think it was fighting but there was egos biases and the internet when you mix those things three things together it's the internet you're gonna get crazy things so we're gonna run down the ratings here Give a little bit there of a take, go. and then we're going to talk about some of the other comments and uh, things that have kind of spiraled out of it. So first Friday night game of the year, USA, 363,000 viewers. Now, I think that's when people started to say, oh, my God, these these numbers aren't great. Now, a couple things. One, Friday night game, not traditionally a football night. Also, traditionally, Fridays are horrible for grabbing ratings. You're also on USA, nothing against USA, but not necessarily known for sports, whereas a Fox or even an FS1, people kind of know what they're getting into there. This isn't really a great rationale, but you know what? Honestly, it might be for the better, Zach, because of all the games, if I'm a USFL executive, if there's any game last weekend that I didn't want people to see, it was that one. It was that one. It was slower. It was defensive slugfest, you know, which in terms of evaluating spring leagues, 
People don't want to see those. They want, they assume that they're, when they're advertised that they want to see the high explosive, high scoring games. And sure, it didn't, didn't show up. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. Plus USA, you know, it, it was a sharp dive for them. I'll admit for Friday. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And I think something while we're continuing this, mm. um, I, I had a few thoughts on these cause yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting used to slash, uh, almost trying to handle better every now and then these ratings discussions mm-hmm. every time we have a new league because it just, it, it I, I know it's going to come up, Is- but then I have to brace for impact mm-hmm. and wait for, you know, like you're saying the pitchforks or, you know, the spin or the praise, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's always going to come up like that. Um, and this one was really for me, I had to sit back and go, okay, we got to put a few things in perspective. A, you know, I did, I did see a good point from awful announcing. Mm-hmm. Maybe some audience members see another league and go, this one's going to go too because the other two before it went. And sure, yes, I hear the slight crowd in the background, but there were reasons. And yeah, that's fine. We can talk about those reasons another time. I'm just telling you, mm-hmm. general public won't care about the reasons. They will just care about it's another league. It, it's not, is it going to be another year and done type of thing? Uh, something else, different time of year. Mm-hmm. And that one, I think, finally, after I sat down and went, hey, maybe the different time of year is different. Because, like, some people brought up, like, you know, it is the NBA playoffs. And I'm like, yeah, the NBA playoffs do get a lot of attention. But do you know how much attention they get? Like, out of all the, out of some of the top sporting events this week, the majority of the NBA playoff games, most of them didn't really go below 2 million views Mm -hmm. a game. The two of the top ones were 5 million. And that's over the weekend as well. NBA playoffs take a lot of oxygen out of the oh, room. Yeah. Like they, they absorb a lot of viewership. People get into this stuff. It's usually their time of year. Sure. So keep that and usually NHL playoffs, mm-hmm. but they did perform well with the NHL for sure. So I'll give it that, you know, that that's just two points to keep in mind mm-hmm. when we go through here that I'm like now, and even you are even talking like this way where it's like, it is a different part of the sports season. This isn't February through April where you have two months of dead time sandwiched with March Madness. It's now playoffs, playoffs, NFL draft playoffs. Like, there's a lot more competition, actually, Oh yeah, in this time frame to consider. Well, and I mean, looking at the Friday or Saturday game, first game Saturday on Fox, over a million, still pulling over a million on Fox, moving to FS2. Well, it's FS1, but it started on FS2. Correct. 402,000. So here's a couple other things to note. The USA game didn't underperform the FS1 game from week one. I think that's a good thing, right? One, Friday night, not your traditional ratings night. USA, not your traditional ratings uh, network. The FS1 game that was delayed, not delayed, well, it was bumped to FS2 for, I believe, roughly the first quarter. Yeah, baseball pushed it. And you know what? I'll, I'll be frank. I, I understand why Fox did it because it's mm. a more established thing. I'm not going to knock them. They have to. They have a contract too. I mean, it's different than having your home property. Mm-hmm. So of course, that's why they bumped it to FS2. It that, but I mean, eventually it was over in FS1, and I they tried their best to advertise that. Like, yeah. well, it's just it's the it's the nature of the beast. Baseball is going to overrun. Well, and it, pulled, it happens every time. Oh yeah, I mean, baseball's notorious for it too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, some of those games will go on forever. But still mm-hmm. pulled in f- over 400,000 viewers. Again, some people might look at that number and say, oh, my God, that's a dip. But I, I one, it outperformed what it did the week prior. And even with being bumped off to a different station and then NBC, a little bit over 800,000 with New Orleans and Tampa Bay. Now, <laughs> I mean, the conversation went as well as you would expect on the Internet because it did the people. I mean. This is the one thing that people get very upset on the internet when you say anything that they disagree with, right? I think I saw, I don't even know who he was. I saw somebody make a comment, a thread about the ratings, and he said something about XFL bloggers. Oh my God, (laughs) what an insult, I I guess. That must be the worst thing to be called in the world is an XFL blogger because, I mean, there's a lot of people that took that to heart. Now, I'm not going to get into the weeds on who's right, who's wrong, who has an opinion this or that, but I do think it's interesting because I'll be the first one to admit everybody has a bias. I I would say I have a spring football bias. I I mean, I run XFL newsroom and USFL newsroom. I've skinned in the game on both, right? I want them both to succeed. I mean, if one fails, I mean, that's less 
less business for me, less for me to talk about, whether it's the one we're talking about now or the XFL that comes around next season. I'm a, like I said, I'm a, I like to think of ourselves, Zach, as community ambassadors, right? And part of that is, I mean, me, me specifically, I'm a positive person. So I like to talk about the positive things. If there's negative things, I'm not necessarily ignoring them. And I'll touch on sure. them in my own sure. way. But I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that tries to get negativity out of my life. So I focus on those positive things. And that, that reflects in how I talk about some of the things that we do on the show. But at the same time, I look at some of this and I say, well, these people, I, some of these people are just arguing for the sake of arguing. Because there's something that maybe could give them leverage in... I don't even want to say reporting in their Twitter activities, right? No. But it is nature of Twitter. I'm going to be, I mean, you ain't even, you're, yeah, that, that's just how it is with that mm. site either way. That's why I love it. Honestly, I love Twitter because there's good banter. There's good back and forth and there is a lot of thick skin on there, but every so often, like when I saw the whole conversation kind of devolve over the weekend, I said, why is this such a big thing? Right. Why is this such like a huge situation for everybody? And I think there was, the, well, we saw some comments from some of the executives, Mike Mulvihill and Robert Gottlieb both kind of touched on the, on the situation. And I think they brought things at least into a little bit better perspective. So Mulvey, Mulvihill, part of his thread here, he says week two, obviously down from week one. But again, we expected that maybe not such a is, sharp drop off, but we expected it is the nature of the beast. And it's funny, no matter how much you say that, mm. people still will knock it. But that is how this goes every single time. Exactly. It was bound to happen, people. We've never seen a spring happen. league jump in the ratings week, too. Really, mm. what we're looking for here is what's the baseline, right? If the baseline is 10 people, sh yeah, then you know what? Sound the alarms, guys. <laughs> exactly. But I think if you can pull, just looking at Fox, ignoring everything else. If you can pull a consistent million on Fox throughout the season and even dip through that, but maybe do that cup and handle situation where you get back to that million or maybe a little bit above for the championship game, to me, that's a win. USA, Peacock, that's content fillers. Those are here by this new subscription service. They're, 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 they're not meant to draw in a million people. Now, if they did, signs up, we'd be talking about it all day and night. Don't get me wrong. That's bias, though. That's, I'm, that's, and that's kind of the point I'm trying to prove is it's okay to have an opinion and it's okay to have a thought on a situation, but it seems like there's a lot of people that have opinions and thoughts that are only there specifically that, so they could say our guy's better and it shouldn't, and it doesn't need to be that way. Case of point you brought up earlier, they don't even play at the same time of the year. Right. right. And you look, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you about the, with the ratings thing. Um, my, like, even, like looking at the overall thing, I'll, I'll admit, you know, I, I gave my points on adjusting my, my thoughts on it, mm -hmm. but like I did say, I've said to people, I thought it was down and surprised me a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, cause even I'm sitting here and I thought, well, NBC should draw at least a million right. themselves. So seeing that one did get me a little aback. Um, but I mean, it, it, it is what it is. They, for NBC, I think we're learning more and more, at least that it's about, like you're saying, content filling. And I think they just want to outperform stuff that they have. Mm -hmm. Like I, it's, it's really weird trying to do ratings and like guess and be in the minds of execs. Something that was refreshing. You're talking Mova Hill, Gottlieb, you know, even Hartman mm -hmm. laying out like tweets, like, Hey, this is what our expectations are, you know? And sure. You can argue that's corporate spin to a degree. Some people will put that. I'll, I mean, you want to be able to show your product is in the best possible position that it is. But I think that you look at the type of the time of year, which I didn't even add baseball, by the way. Mm -hmm. I forgot baseball, even in the NBA conversation, you know, another sport. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk the usual stint the last several years of, of February through April, baseball is usually not involved. Neither is NBA is in mid season ish form. And we have no NHL playoffs either. It's right. all standard stuff. Now you're in NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. It's the early goings of MLB. So people getting invested into that. Mm -hmm. And these were things coming up. So 
I'm lear- I think others and I are learning to slightly readjust. And some people also helped with that online. Mm-hmm. And I think the Fox execs put it into light. Like, look, here's what we're targeting. We aren't going to NBA, b- NBA playoff basketball. We probably aren't going to beat that. They, they pretty much showed that when they talked about it, we right. aren't going to beat that NHL. We're on par with that. Great. F1, which I'm like, geez, we've talked, I've talked more F1 right. than I've ever heard on here, but F1, we're beating F1. Awesome. We're beating ABC programming, which that's just thinking like a network exec right, right, right. in terms of what networks like uh soccer leagues. We're beating soccer leagues mm-hmm. on other ones. We're beating premier league. Like they're looking at the spring sports scene for the non top five. And I think they just want a spot that says, Hey, we have an established base and we can get in that vein of these guys make this money on these TV deals. We can make that cheddar too. If we just keep it like MLS mm-hmm. has an insane deal, but draws in, what is pre- comparatively god awful ratings? Well, it, yeah. If this, if they were pulling, in, and, if and the USFL saying, was pulling in those ratings, we would be hearing all of it all the time. But yeah, and I'm only, I'm only saying that because that's what I'm adding context. Mm-hmm. I still will acknowledge that yes, compared to the last few ventures, sure, they're definitely lower ratings. I'm not even. You can't hide that, mm-hmm. okay? But I think the context of the different season is what Fox is trying to stress. Like, hey, it's a different time of year. We are being stupid patient about this and again as you've brought up stefan on this show many times everything's paid for by the way Mm -hmm. you know i think that's something that gets lost in the crowd this is all paid for yeah the the money is already it's done now it's all about just trying to show off the product and getting what you can out of what you set up you know it's a long game venture Mm -hmm. fans i think a lot of general audience members don't want that or understand that because as football fans, they're not used to it. <laughs> well, and I think, and I'm even going to say this as a football fan myself, I think the NFL has spoiled so many of us with what we want. And sure, I want my teams in stands too. I, I want to, I want to go to Detroit someday and watch a Panthers game. And I hope that's next year, mm-hmm. you know. But a lot of what gets lost is you can have all the glitz and glamour. You have to be fiscally responsible, people. I have been, I have seen too many of these leagues fail. Because monies get thrown around and they don't think about the long term. It's all about the short term. We might flip it. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, they're 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 going at it about a way to where they want to make sure there's a season two. What's the point of having the biggest, grandest season one if you never play a down again? Right. And they're going right. at it with that. They know you see the comment about attendance. They know that there was nobody. Right. There was nobody they've, that was they, sitting around. Execs have said it that they know. Yeah, that. They, Gottlieb said in his own thread. One, if you haven't read it, go to Robert Gottlieb's Twitter. Find the one that talks about addressing and analyzing the ratings. He talks about it in there. Mm-hmm. They knew this going in, and even everyone else pointed out that they knew it too. They weren't going to be drawing for these non Birmingham teams. They knew it. Right. They no one in their right mind would go in and assume they were going to pack the damn stands with a Michigan versus Pittsburgh game. Because, unless, sure, Birmingham is the Pittsburgh of the South, but that doesn't mean Pittsburgh fans are plenty or in Alabama. Right. You know, nor Michigan fans. I'm just saying, like, the stuff's on the wall. I'm trying to adjust my thoughts on ratings because of the year, you know. Mm-hmm. I still acknowledge past events of other leagues, but I also see the time of year does make things impact a little more. Oh, as well as the fact that people want to eventually see these teams in stadiums. Just got to wait it out. I think that's going to help again, getting to that season two, that's going to help. I think that's going to create like the legitimacy factor of people saying, Oh, I can breathe easier now. Or even new people that didn't know about it and say, wait, they're, they're already at a season two. Oh, they must Mm -hmm. be business. Getting that familiarity, familiarity and then getting into the markets. I mean, Michigan did well with them even playing in Birmingham as far as viewership, as far as the week one, that is. Right. But I think once you start getting getting them in the stadium, again, that creates awareness as well that's going to start getting people to watch, watch on TV. Again, you're going to draw people in for that first game. They're not going to. I mean, not everybody's crazy like us, Zach. Like if I had the opportunity in Birmingham, I would be there every weekend. Not everybody is like that, weirdly know. enough, I, you know? I, I wish. I had someone in one of my other ventures I'm in ask, are you down there right now? I'm like, I wish it was every week I was down there covering mm-hmm. these teams. 
I would do it with, I would, if I was down there and able to do that fiscally responsibly for myself, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Speaking of which, I actually teased this on Twitter and this is for the playoffs and the championship. I was debating, do I fly out there for the playoffs? Because if I fly out there for the playoffs, that means I, I have to stay in Canton for a week. It would be more expensive to fly there and back twice. Right. 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 And you know what? I did it. <laughs> I booked, <laughs> I booked a, yeah. well, so separate from the Airbnb, I have like a full residential hotel that has like a separate room and they have like a full kitchen and buffet and all that stuff downstairs. My hope okay. is cover those playoff games. And throughout the week, I assume that the league is going to be doing practices leading off to the championship. So my goal, my hope is to bring everybody some extra live coverage via the USFL podcast, YouTube channel, as well as Twitter. Maybe, eh, maybe throw some Instagram in there as well. And if they don't let me in, I'm telling you, I got the ref shirt sack. I can slink through that fence, get on the <laughs> field. It'll take them at least 10 minutes before they realize it's me. All I have to do is keep my mouth shut. Once I open it, they'll be like, oh, that, that guy is a loud mouth. Get him out of here. <laughs> Either way, we're going to be down there. I'm going to be down there for the playoffs. It sounds like you might be down there for one of the games. I mean, at the very least, championship. I mean, here's the deal. It's not like last time where, you know, now I'm, it's kind of in my backyard, the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm full. I'm at max five hours with traffic away from Canton, Ohio. Like it's so easy to get over there. Um, You know, I just got to, I'll get the time. And luckily it's on the weekend for that, for that championship. I'll be there for sure. No matter what, I will be there for the championship game on July 3rd. For sure. Well, if you need a place to stay on the Saturday night for the champ, uh, playoff games, let me know. Cause I got a place oh, yeah. to stay and I got to remember, don't say the hotel because that's how <laughs> bad things happen. But either way, I'll be in Canton, Ohio for a week. So if you're down there for the playoffs, come say hi, we'll have some of the trading cards. And again, you know, the drill for the week, week later for the championship Saturday, we're doing the pro football hall of fame tour. Sunday, we're doing summer stocks. Spring stock was so nice. We're doing it twice, two-day event. Either way, we got off a little bit of topic there. Uh, but I think I think this was worth talking about. It's, it's good to put into context because here's the real situation. When you look at the list of the ratings, they beat out Saturday Night Football, F1, NHL, Premier League. And NHL won. Th- now, this is a big one because ABC, ESPN, they just paid $120 million a year. Now, if you want mm-hmm. to make a comparable and they're on par with that, to me, that brings the value of the USFL up, not down. Right. Now that's 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 when we start talking rights deals. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I and that's also another perspective thing, you know. And again, full season we'll get to analyze this. You know, week three is gonna be its own challenges. Mm-hmm. But they are they are one thing they're catching on. Stallions games, as long as they're good. They're putting them on broadcast television. Well, because that's one thing that I've local noticed. market is important, you know? So if you look at the USFL.com and go to their schedule, they've started to place out beyond. So we, we have the week four schedule, the week four TV schedule. But if you look, I believe up until week six or seven, they already have those stallions games marked. They know those are our Saturday showcase games. Those bad boys are going on Fox I mean, although you and I know that the attendance isn't a big deal, they're listening to the internet. They see that people are saying, where is everybody? I'm surprised. You're surprised. But there's a lot of people that are surprised to find out that they're all playing in Birmingham still. So kind of a way around that. Let's make sure the games that have the biggest attendance have the biggest audience on TV. And it kind of absolves that. And again, short-term problems, hopefully. But the goal, again, is to get these teams out into markets. And then, I mean, if, then if they don't show up in that market, that's a, that's a completely different problem than if they don't show up when they're out of market, right? But oh, yeah. we have to get to those baby steps first. I've said it since the very beginning. 17 shows I've been saying this, Zach. If everything the USFL is doing now ensures that we get to see them play next year, and even more importantly, the year after, and really the most important to me, Zach, this is the big one. If they get to a year four, to me, that means they're doing it right. Because what we've heard is they have the first three seasons paid for now, if they can, so that to me shows if you can get NBC to renew and pay, maybe pay more or get a deal with a different 
broadcast partner or boost up your own broadcast network. Who knows? I mean, that to me is the real success. And I think that's what the league's looking at. Year one is about getting a good football brand off the ground, creating exciting, entertaining, family-friendly football that's affordable for everybody if you live in Birmingham, at least. Get to year two. Get to year two. It's got to say every show because that is the motto that is part of this league. Get to year two. Think of the party we're going to have, Zach. Year two. I I mean, in the whole time that I've been reporting about spring football, I've never got to report on a year two. Hey, I would love to talk about a year two. And plus, let's, let's say, this is, again, the thing we got to keep in mind, like, you know, Year two, what what comes with that if we can get there? Mm-hmm. You know, we're gonna not only have to talk about people renewing contract or up re-upping on the second year contracts, but also new draft prospects. We'll get to be looking at that as well. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be seeing, you know, another year of at least training camps and such. You know, how do teams adjust on the fly? Who leaves for the NFL? These are all things that are gonna play out in the offseason. Yeah. We just got to get to year two. Well, that's what that's what's going to be fun. I was thinking about this the other day, man. What are we going to talk about in the off season? All sorts of things. I mean, yes. what I'm hoping, I mean, we're going to talk about all the people that move on, take that next step in their career clearly. But I, I really hope we start hearing news about private owners, new stadiums, new, not new locations or expansion, but where these sure. places, where the teams are going to go. I've always speculated in Houston. We'll see the gamblers at Rice Stadium. I'd love to see it, but I want to know it. Michigan, are the Panthers going to go into Ford Field? Or are they going to, I don't even know where the else they play because I feel like, well, I mean, the big house. Just go to Ford Field. Yeah. D- don't, even, right. don't even mess with anything else. Just you have to have a dome up there in the winter. And, you know, we, we joke about Birmingham. Detroit is very similar with the, just crazy weather when it comes to spring. I mean, we're surrounded oh, yeah. by water. Oh, you, you know, you live in the middle well, of Indianapolis yeah, and even crazy. Like, even if it's a slightly bit drive South, like it's five hours South. It's still like, I mean, last week it was in, it was in the low eighties last two days. I've had like low, I've had low fifties or like, I'll wake up and I need a coat yeah. today. <laughs> like, I'm like, come on, come on. Oh, spring you know? time in the Midwest. Exactly. So exactly. Either way, I, I, I there's going to be so much to look forward to, but basically what we're getting to here is let's get through season one. Let's make it to season two and let's just have fun along the way. The ultra super fun league is here to stay. Come on. Let's have, <laughs> let's have a good time. Everybody. That's another favorite acronym acronym for this league. That's great. Let's gonna great. put that bad boy on a t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, week four TV schedule. We got that coming out. So if you guys aren't aware, all the people that are tuning in or listening on your favorite podcast platform, the the USFL doesn't have their TV schedule for the full year. They they kind of do it week by week. And that's mainly to ensure that the the best teams or there's a better opportunity to have the best games viewed by the most people. So and and as we're seeing, it's experimentation for both networks to see what gets better numbers where exactly. That, that's right. the other aspect now. Exactly. Right. So we saw it earlier this week already. They moved that, which I, they had to that breaker stallions game into the mm-hmm. Saturday, moving it from Sunday week four, though, kicking things off. We have our second Friday game of the, of the year stars at Panthers 9 PM. Oh, wait, is it? It's actually 9 PM central. I believe so it's 10 PM. Eastern. Fox Sports yes, it, that is a very late game. That one's uh, a I saw it's some ripen online. It's one of the few 10 p.m. Eastern games they are doing this year. Um, I already I we've already heard the begrudging on that, yeah. but it was bound to happen. Like they had a few of them already. They said we're going to happen that way. Just happens to be one of them. That's it. So you know, Saturday though, second Peacock exclusive going back to back on the weeks here. Generals at Maulers Saturday at I'm assuming these are all Central, so 2:30 p.m. Eastern. Moving to the late game, though, 6 p.m., getting that Friday night love here from Fox. Tampa mm-hmm. Bay Bandits at the Stallions. Kind of that, again, we're going to see that's how they're treating the Stallions. It makes sense because, again, we already talked about that's when your attendance is going to be the highest. Well, if the most people are watching here, let's play it there. But let's right. not forget Sunday, week four, has has the opportunity to be another real fun game here. Gamblers and Breakers, 3 p.m. on NBC and Peacock. So NBC's getting a good game on that Sunday, but we'll give you the picks next week. Wanted to break it down. And by next week, we'll have the week five TV schedule. 
Before we wrap things up, though, a little bit of a milestone for the USFL. They hit the big 1 million. Now, this might not seem like a big deal because it's 1 million over all their social media channels. But just two weeks ago, going from preseason into the season, they only had 500,000. So over the last two weeks, they added, they've doubled what they had before to hit that mm-hmm. 1 million marker. Sign them up. Dude, I'm telling you that social media people over there, small team, mean and lean, but they're getting it done. They're making it clean. I can't be mad at what I'm seeing. Over 37 million views across all platforms over the first two weeks. You can't be mad at that. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Not at all. And we're only going to see them grow from here. I mean, realistically, like we said, small team, getting it done. Everything's professional. Don't see any mistakes over there. Now, what I'm really interested to see is where we're at next year and where the teams kind of line up as the season goes through. Because our dude, Arden, USFL on Twitter, Arden Podcast, uh, Michigan mm-hmm. Panthers Podcast, they have a, uh, they've been following which teams have the most followers. And the Generals made a heck of a jump last week coming in to number two place. They may have overtaken the Panthers by now. I haven't looked, so I'm going back to the numbers they reported on the 22nd. So it's been about a week now. That's it. They've jumped from like number seven to number two. Well, TikTok is a massive boon for them. And really the league's TikTok's account, TikTok accounts have been doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where they're beginning a lot of numbers as of late. Uh, they activated that also that they got, they finally got that YouTube page up as we've talked about. Yeah. Um, but TikTok, they've been killing it over there apparently in terms of followership um, one thing I've noticed too, uh, the breakers, I think, I mean, they've been number two or three as of late. Mm. Um, they're starting to pick up more pace. I think it's cause they're just one of the better teams in the league. Mm-hmm. They're close to Birmingham. I mean, <laughs> New Orleans fans are rabid of their sports for the most part, especially football. And I mean, Dave, so, the wave dude, Dave, the wave, Dave the wave is, is so just a cool. kick ass. He's just a kick ass mascot. Like seriously, we never, here's the thing, Zach, we never ranked the ma- mascots. So I'm just going to say I have two ties for number one. It's Dave the Wave and the Blob, and if anybody I, disagrees with it, I don't care. <laughs> I would have picked Dave the Wave as one. That that would have been my quintessential number one. The Blob probably was two or three. Okay, good. That see, that's all I really cared about was where you would concede on the Blob to me. If you would concede two or three, I'm fine with that. Um, maybe we'll do this a little bit. We'll get into it a little bit later. But I know I, I, we talked about it. We never did it. But here's the real deal: Dave the Wave, number one, baby. The rest, sign oh, yeah. him up. You know, the Blob, Absolutely. Dave the Wave. And uh, we're having a good time. But you know what? I think that's about it for this week. It's a fun week. It's a great week. But I think we're going to see some really good football this weekend, especially that Breakers-Stallions game. And then even, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to be watching that Maulers-Panthers game Sunday for a completely set of reasons. We hope you guys tune in. Thanks for tuning, tuning in to our show. So if you haven't followed us already on social media, go look us up, go look us up at USFL Podcast. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, having a lot of fun over there. Most of the activities happening over on Twitter, but like I said, I've been dabbling in the gram, getting a little instant over there, so maybe we'll see some more content. Uh, if you're over on YouTube watching us, make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe button, click the bell, builds morale. If your team's 0-2, maybe you'll get a little bit of good luck by clicking those two maybe. buttons. <laughs> make sure you do it before Saturday. If you don't do it before Saturday, your team's going to lose. I'm, I just hate to break it to you. That's just how it has to be. Come on, Panthers fans. We need that win. I'm telling you. I need that win. The good news is, though, if they hit the subscribe button, they hit the the, the bell, get the morale, they're going to know whenever we drop new videos. And honestly, Zach, I think we, we're, we're about ripe for a live stream. I don't know when. We'll talk about that off camera. But at minimum, a mid-season live stream something that like that just about to propose to you so that might be in the card well we'll we'll keep you guys updated but here's the thing if you click the bell you'll know when to give you a little bit of morale with that live stream so that's the good news there and if you hit subscribe you're going to be entered into the giveaway once we hit 5,000 subscribers on youtube we're giving away a jersey from the official usfl shop and quite honestly they're probably going to be available by then and oh, yeah. uh, here's something to look forward to. I'm going to be, I'll unbox those jerseys on the show. I at least have the Panthers, the Gamblers one. And if the Breakers pull it out this weekend, we'll have another one to add to the list. And we'll unbox those 
live on the show. Make sure you tune in. Stay tuned for details on summer stock. Like I said, so nice. We're doing it twice. J- July 2nd, July 3rd. You heard. Let's have fun. Won't break it down the full way for you again. Zach, any any final parting words before we, we head off into week three of the USFL? Just enjoy the ride and lo- and enjoy the football. You know, I think uh, I think that's the conversation that, you know, I think needs to be taken the most. I know that we want to look at everything else and honestly feel free to do so. But, you know, I think we mostly have acknowledged last week football's getting better and there's been quality games. Acknowledge the good stuff too, as well as what needs to be critiqued. I think that sometimes gets lost in the shuffle. And that's why I want to leave on today. Well, I couldn't have said it any better myself, so I'm going to leave it at that. Tune in every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern on YouTube or your podcast platform of choice. Until next time, sign you up.